Shall we start now? Yes, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. So dear esteemed speaker, Mr. Subramanian and dear faculty members and loving students, special greetings and warm welcome to you all. It's with great pleasure and excitement that I welcome you all to this international webinar on working capital finance. In the dynamic landscape of global finance, the effective management of working capital stands as a cornerstone for sustainable business growth. Working capital is the lifeblood of any organization, a key determinant of its financial health and operational vitality. As we navigate through the complexities of this critical financial component, we are honored to have with us a distinguished expert, Mr. A. Subramanian. With an illustrious career and a wealth of experience in accounts, finance, and statutory matters, Mr. Subramanian will guide us through the nuances of working capital management and share insights that transcend geographical boundaries. Throughout the course of this webinar, we aim not only to explore the theoretical foundation of working capital finance, but also to draw from practical experiences. Mm -hmm. Once again, a warm welcome to each of you and a special welcome to Mr. Subramanian with a virtual bouquet. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So now I invite Dr. Rita Rebecca, Dean Academics, to felicitate the webinar. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shabu, for having inviting me to felicitate this uh, wonderful international webinar. So on behalf of the Xavier Institute of Business Administration and the entire organizing committee, I extend the warmest gratitude to you, sir, for having accepted our invite uh, to conduct this international webinar on working capital and finance. And definitely your presentation uh, will definitely enrich the knowledge base of our students and, and the, your, uh, the discussions that you engage with them on critical aspects of working capital management will definitely be an eye opener to our students. And uh, the complex uh, accounting concepts uh, will definitely be uh, in a comprehensible um, manner uh, while you take the session on international, uh, you know, while you take the session on working capital finance. And uh, on behalf of Ziba and our father director, Reverend Dr. Michael John S.J., uh, he's uh, on an engagement today uh, uh, in an inaugural program um, in, an, in a, another organization. So he's not able to come here, join, probably he'll be joining you joining you late and on behalf of him and the faculty members of Ziba, I warmly welcome you, sir, to this virtual program. Uh, welcome Thanks. you, sir. Welcome you, Mr. Subramanian, sir. Thank you, madam. Uh, thank, thank you me. very much for having been here virtually to, uh, to educate our students on working capital on finance. Uh, over to Mr. Shabu. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for the words. So I'm, I'm truly honored to introduce Mr. A. Subramanian, an accomplished finance professional with a wealth of experience and expertise in the field of accounts, finance, and statutory matters. So he is currently serving as the Director of Finance at Ozone Reserve Bollifish in the Maldives, managed by Atmosphere Hotels and Resorts. Mr. Subramanian has a consistently demonstrated dynamic leadership and a keen understanding of the financial intricacies with diverse industries. With a first-class Bachelor of Commerce degree from Madurai Kamraj University and an intermediate qualification in Chartered Accountancy and PGDBA in Finance from Symbiosis Pune, Mr. Subramanian seeks to leverage his extensive experience in the manufacturing, trading, and hospitality sectors. His multidisciplinary skills 
organizational prowess and effective communication makes him a valuable resource person for our student. Mr. Subramanian is characteristic by his dynamic Mr. Subramanian is characteristic by his dynamic, enthusiastic, and self-motivated personality, his commitment to delivering results within stipulated timelines and budgets, both as a team player and an individual, reflects his hardworking nature, possessing technical competence coupled with business acumen. Among his notable achievements are being part of the pre-opening team of two hotels and the conference center successfully recovering outstanding accounts receivables and implementing a cost saving contingency plan during the challenging year of 2020. This seasoned financial expert has consistently demonstrated his ability to lead, motivate teams and drive positive change in various organizational settings. As he addresses our students on the topic of working capital finance, we are confident that his wealth of experience will provide valuable insights enriching their understanding of this critical aspect of financial management. Sir, over to you, sir. Thank you, Sabu. Thank you, madam. It's Thank really you. honored for me to be part of this team. This is the first session for me, so which have been asked by Shobhi many years. I've been traveling out of India, so I couldn't make it possible earlier. So then finally I decided to do that. Uh, I've been in in Malaysia, before that in Indonesia, this is my third overseas assignment. So I'll just take through the working capital financial management. I make a presentation. It's very simple, but uh, I make to understand the concept and make sure that I will, when the students have any questions, they may ask any time. And after that, I will walk through these, my practical experience, how in the organization, how we are practically managing the cash flow, working capitals, which I will walk through that as well. Okay. Uh, so Abu, can I share my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can search. Yes, sir, your screen is visible now. Yeah. I just make a small presentation yesterday because I was in the little busy with my year end, month end, and uh, budgeting for next year. So I just quick make one hey, uh, slide. I will walk through what I'm going to talk about the introduction of the working capitals concepts of the working capitals, objectives of working capital management, what are the objectives we have, why we need working capitals, what is the operating cycle for the working capital, and how we are determining the working capital, and then what are the approaches we can have as an organization, how they estimate the working capitals. So, sir, can you make, make your PPT as a full screen view, sir? Slideshow. Slideshow view. Uh, it's I done that one minute. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, sir. Yes. Now, now we can see. Now you can see, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now we can see. Yes. Okay. As working capital, as any of the students aware of it, uh, which is basically required for any organizations, they need to run their business. Uh, which is on the key concept for their working capitals. So they need the day-to-day operations, uh, how we are going to manage the business. So uh, if they don't have a proper working capitals, the business may not succeed or they may not perform well, they may not achieve the profit what they say. So the need for proper management of working capitals is important in the modern area as well. I can quote the later on example for the working capital managements. Uh, the two important elements to be considered under the working capital managements are decision on the amount of current assets to be held by a firm for efficient operation of the business. Meaning the business, how much assets, current assets, as students are aware of what is the current assets, basically the sundry debt or stock, investment, inventories, cash and bank balance, which are current assets, how much they can 
should hold to run the business. And then second decision is working capital requirement for operation of the business. So any organization, the finance managers or finance head, their role Excuse is... Me, sir. Uh, uh, Subramanian, sir. Yes, please. Uh, we, we, we can't see your we can't see your PPT in a full screen view, sir. Can you make it full screen view, sir? Not in full screen. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. You said it is in full screen. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, first, first it was in full screen, but now it is not. Wait, wait, wait. Now, is yeah. it okay? now? No. It's better. Now you can see. No, right? no, no, sir, no, sir. Still, it is uh, like. The previous wait uh just a minute i uh, let me call my it uh, it manager one minute please yeah can you send your ppt to us sir so that i we can present here I just WhatsApp you. Okay. okay, sir. Okay. I we will present from here, sir. Yeah, yeah, please, please. Subramanian, sir? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I can see you. Yeah, thank you, sir. One minute. Can I move the slide, sir? Yeah, I can. Can you move to the next slide? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, so I was talking about the introduction is I talk about the working capitals of any business which is required for their business operations, working capital is a key role. So they have their own fund when they need the funds to operate the business, the working capital is a major role playing for that. Any company, organization, their lack of funds, they may end up with failure on the business. So any business manager, finance manager or a finance controller, their main role is to manage the funds to how to effectively operate their business. So I will walk through the next slide of what are the uh, concept of working capital. Can you move to the next slide? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There are four concepts of working capital. Gross working capital, net working capital. Oh, wow. Uh, mm -hmm. temporary working capital and permanent working capitals. Basically, gross working capital is, talks about the total current assets of the organizations, which is, uh, as I mentioned, the cash and bank balance, advances to supplier or deposits, uh, investment, uh, sundry debtors, inventories, prepaid expenses or bills receivables. These are all called the gross, gross working capital. Networking capital is the Excess of current assets minus current liabilities will come here as a networking capital. Meaning to say, gross working capital refers to current assets. Networking capital is current assets minus current liability. Current liability, as you know, sundry creditors, bills payable, short-term loans, unsecured loans. Can you move to the next slide, please? Yes, sir, I'll move. Yeah. Yeah, so this I mentioned gross working capital basically refers to the current assets of the firm. 
uh, it is called as a quantitative aspect of the working capital. It means it is total quantity of the assets which company have as a current assets to run their business. Um, they need to plan the utilization of the funds of the firm, demand working capital management, which is up to current assets. Move to the next slide, please. I, I cannot move, right? I'm sorry. Uh, can you move to the next slide? Networking capital is the, as I said, excess of current assets over current liabilities and provisions. So networking capital should be always positive. Uh, it means the company is in a good position. If it could not be a negative position, then it's very difficult to operate our day-to-day -day operation of the firm. So the firm's short-term solvency is measured through the networking capital positions, which is called the networking capital is called as a qualitative concept, which indicates the liquidity position of the firm, uh, which for a company's records to run their business. Moving on to the next slide, please. Permanent working capital. No, it is able. Okay, there are two slides missing. Okay, actually, there are another two permanent working capital, which is the minimum amount of investment record for their operation of the business, which is a fixed amount. That's why it's called a permanent working capital. Other, whereas the temporary capital is called as the fluctuation variable working capital based on the business needs that working capital is required for operation of the business. So in brief, it is amount of investment required to take care of the variations of lectures in the business activity. Please let me know if I'm going fast or if anything I need to explain detail, I will I will explain, Sabu. No, sir, you're perfectly going well, sir. Okay, right, right. So can you move to the next slide, please? Yes, sir, yes, sir, I'll post. Next yes, sir. Talking about the, what are the objective of working capital? The reason for working capital. What is the objective? Have a working capital managing the working capital. So any business we are doing that it is end of the day we have to give the maximizing the profit of the organization for the owners or stakeholder of the company. The people who invested the business. The end of the day they want to make a profit. How they are going to make a profit is to managing their business well and organizing in such a way that getting the raw material on time and processing for the manufacturing and finished goods on to the sales to the customer and get back the money. So that cycle, they need, so they need to always have a gap between the sales and realization of money from the customer. This is, that is why we need to have the management of working capital. So the basically the objective of working capital management is getting the money from the customer for run the operation. There is a gap between sale of the goods and then get back the money. So which is called we effectively do managing the working capital. So sometimes the firm will have the returns higher than the record amount of investment current assets. What happened is this funds excess will be reduce the firm's profitability on the operating cycles because they will lock that money in the current assets. So therefore, the objective of working capital management is to ensure the smooth functioning of the normal business or operation. So the firm has to design an amount of working capital to be employed. Let's say companies are running the business for 10 lakhs. Is they invested in 10 lakhs, their sales is uh, almost 15 lakhs. They have to get a profit of 10 to 20 percentage. So they, they cannot invest full amount on the business. They may, the owners may invest 5 lakhs and then 5 lakhs he may get the loan from the bank. So this 5 lakhs is internal. I'm just sharing an example of how we go about it. This 5 lakhs is own investment for the fixed assets for the setting of the unit, other things. For the 5 lakhs working capital he get from the bank or financial institutions to produce the product which he wanted to sell to the, com the customers and get back the money. Then again, he will rotate that money for the business. So the money which he 
borrow from the bank, he has to repay to the bank at the same time, he has to pay the interest and principal to the bank at the same time, he has to make a profit. So that is why he need to diligently invest the money and keep eye on the recovery of the money from the customer. When they are selling, the sale may be a, we are selling, the sales can be shown in the books as revenue. But the real revenue is when the money recovered from the customer. So that says realize until unless realize the money, the income is which is called as a notional income. Though it's a sales, until unless we get back the money from the customer, it's called the notional income. So if you don't get the money, then it will be very difficult to operation of the business. So that's why he says the objective of the working capital management ensures smooth functioning of the normal business of the firm. The firm has to decide on working capital to be employed. So that's why the last point I mentioned is the objective of working capital management is achieving a trade-off between liquidity and profitability of operations for the smooth contact of normal operation of the business. So any questions here? Sabu? No, sir. No, sir. Right now. Okay. So we go to the next slide. It's about talking about uh, need for working capital. Yeah, yeah, sir. I'll, I'll move. Hmm. The, why we need to have a working capital? Why we cannot run the business on our, on our own? As I said earlier, if, even if you invest the money, we cannot run the business. We may get the funding from the bank to operation of the business. So the need for working capital is when there is a sale happen, the realization is happening after one month or 60 days or 90 days. So during this period, how we are going to operate the business? So that is why the we are getting the working capital from the financial institution. To finance operation during the time gap between the credit sales and realization of money from the customer front. So this is one of the need. This is a need for having working capital in place. Another one is to finance investment in current asset to achieve the growth target in sales. We have a target of sales, which we may got a new order to execute the order we need to do the manufacturing the goods for which we need to buy the raw materials and other things. So which we don't have the money because our money is stuck with the Sunday debtors, which will take some time. So we will borrow the money from the bank so to manufacture and again sell and get the money. So this is a cycle. So this that is the reason we need to have a working capital for operation of the business. Suppose if there is a working capital is lower than what we expected. It means excess of current, uh, current liabilities over the current assets, meaning inadequate working capital. So what, we have, what will happen is, uh, it will be difficult for the firms to get the new business, order taking the new orders from the customer or take up the new business. So due to not availability of working capital, it would be difficult for the firms to undertake a new project and the profit is the main for the business investors. So the profit goal may not be achieved due to the implementation of the operating plan. Cash prices may emerge due to loss shortage of fund. So we cannot pay back to the vendor or we cannot pay back to the salary. We cannot pay to the statutory payments if the working capital is inadequate. So optimum utilization of the assets also not be achieved when we don't have enough working capital to for the business. And also, as I mentioned, so difficult to pay the salary or time or uh, statutory payments or the vendor payments. So that is called difficult to honoring commitments on time. And also, we don't have the stock to run the operations. So not availability of stock due to lack of working capital. Uh, Sabu, can you move to the next one? If the working capital is excessive working capital, what would be the reason? So it is what happened is excess of working capital and unnecessary accumulation of inventory, which will be piled up in our inventory, which is not being sold. The more stock we hold in our hand is more risk for us because the stock may be expired or stock may be redundant or people may not buy. There is no demand for that. So if there is more inventory in our hand, 
So our working capital is log, unnecessarily we are paying interest to the banks. Also, it may lead to it offer liberal credit terms to the buyers and then the recovery from the buyer also will be delayed. So which also impact in, we don't get back the money as well. So it shows clearly the inefficiency of the management to run the operations if you are holding the excessive working capital in hand. So another point, which is in also one of the reasons impact of excessive working capital is over investment in working capital makes capital less productive, may reduce return on investments. So we invested in money, the owners invested money or stakeholder invest money, hoping that they will get the return 10, 20% or 15%. If you are holding the hold the money, so we do not may not be able to deliver the, what is that expectations. So that is why if over investment in working capital makes capital less protective and may reduce return on investment. Can you move to the next slide, please? Yes, sir. This is called operating cycle. So operating cycle clearly start about where does working capital start. So when we start off the business, <clears throat> We will invest some money, we will borrow money from banks, so we will buy the raw materials and then raw materials go into the productions and the work in progress and then becomes the finished goods. Then we are sending to market sale on the credit basis 30 days or 40 days or 45 days. Then we will get the money from the debtors. That money again will be reinvested for purchasing raw material. So this is a cycle. This cycle should be continuously operated. If there is a delay in one place, will be impacting the overall business of the organization. So operating cycle is otherwise called a working capital cycle. So time gap between the acquisition of the resources, that is by purchasing of raw material and collection of the curse from the customers. So which I define as the, the operating cycle of a firm involves the following elements. Acquisition of resource from the supplier, as I'm starting a business, suppose I'm doing the trading business or I'm just making a food industry or something. So I will get the raw material. Since I'm being the industry of hotel industries, we will get the raw material, foods, vegetables, or uh, groceries on the credit basis. Then we will give into the guests for making us a food and giving to the guests. The guests who are staying in the hotel, so they will pay the money after 30 days. Then I have to pay back to the money to the creditors. My credit terms is uh, with the vendor also 30 days. It's sometimes it's very difficult for me to return the money to pay back to the vendor. If I don't pay the money to the vendor, it's very difficult to get the material again. So most of the, in, since I'm in the hotel industry, so in our industry, most of them, what we do is our credit terms to the corporate client or our customer is would be 30 days, 15 days, 30 days. Whereas for our credit terms of the suppliers is 30 days to 45 days or 60 days. So we have some breathing time to pay back to the vendor to run the operations. So this cycle is an operating cycle is called working capital cycle. The shorter the operating cycles, so larger will be the turnover of the funds invested. Can you move to the next slide, please? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. The next one is we are talking about what is it? Um, working capitals, concept of working capital, need of working capital, objective of working capital. Now we need to. How do we determine the working capital? So the determination of working capital you is depends upon the various factors in it. So it depends upon the nature of business what kind of business we are going to do, how much we are going to And of the size of the business, we are going to either mid-scale or small scale or uh, a larger scale. Because if you go for larger scale, you need a heavy investment for everything. If you are small scale, we are op opening the shop with 100 square feet. We are opening a small shop. So our requirement is very minimum. And then this, if it is a manufacturing, how much time duration for the completion of the raw material to finish goods. 
and then what are the product we are using is for that production schedule, how much time it takes to do the manufacturing for inventories. And then the volume of sales, what would be the volume we are going to sell? It is under larger quantity or what are the, how much we are going to sell? Can you go to the next slide, please? Yes, sir. Yeah. And then terms and conditions, what is our purchase terms with the vendors? And then what is our, as I mentioned the previous slide about the credit period, uh, for the credit hours, we may credit period is 45 days to 60 days. For the debt hours, we may keep it 30 days to 40 days. So that terms and conditions, what we are doing, that's how much quantity we are going to buy from the purchase uh, vendor. So these terms and condition also one of the reason for determining our working capital. And then the operating efficiency is how we effectively we put our money to of run the operations. So for which, how much you record the money. And of course, inflations, you have the price inflations really have, this is a constant consistently prior inflations happen when there is a diesel price or petrol price when the market is down. So the price level change. That is also sometimes due to high demand, the prices are increased. We may record working capital more than what usually we'll have. And also, another is the business cycles. Some of the business is the seasonal business, some of this is throughout the year business. If some business is booming, some is be going depression. So these are also one of the factors for determining the working capital. So as another is the technology. So now we are, everything is updated. Even when there is no shop, people are running the business through online. People don't have, like you can take the Amazon or Flipkart, they don't have their own, they are not investing money, they have the many, tie up with the many suppliers in across the city in all over the world. So when you are ordering online, nearest to your place, some vendor will be there, they will be tie up and then they will deliver it this. So this is also processing technology also, right? And how much we can invest for the working capital. And also the fluctuation in the supply of raw materials. Some of the material, raw material we may get from the specific suppliers. Like, uh, for example, for the garment business, when if you are having there some materials, you can get it from Eurod or Tirupur. They are busy in the in Eurod if you have, they have a bed sheet. And then Tirupur, they have more of garment business, bunny and uh, t-shirts, everything. So, so the reason is they have a list resources available there. They are managing the business there. So which is required to maintain the buffer stock of raw material to meet the requirement of uncertainty in lead time. <laughs> lead time is how much time we record for ordering the goods again. Okay. Can you move to the next slide, please? Yes, sir. So how we, we determine, now we determine the working capital, how much records. So how we approach us for the working capital numbers. There are two ways of approaching the workers. One is a conventional approaches. Another is operating cycle approaches. Conventional approach is very simple. Like, uh, as I mentioned, the current assets, uh, inventory, receivables, uh, cash and bank balance, deposits, prepaid expenses, all and then the payables and the creditors. So how excess of current assets minus current liabilities, how much current assets we have. So repay our current liability. So the balance will be used to for again for the reinvestment of business. So that's a conventional approach. And whereas operating cycle approach is another one which is exactly opposite to the conventional operation, which is based on the duration of the operator. Our limited time, we are operating the business. So we need that particular period only we record the working capitals. So under this approach, the working capital is determined on the basis of duration of the operating cycle and the operating expense record for completing the cycle. Shall I move on, sir? Yes, please. 
how we estimate the working capital. So we determine the working capital, what approaches we follow, then, and then estimate how much we need for the working capital. So we are estimating the working capital, assuming that our production and sales occur continuously and then all costs are under control and are regularly occurring. So which is the main ingredient for estimating the working capital? So like example, we are our we are investing in a business, assuming we are selling as a trade business, like opening the small shop, selling the t-shirts only during the Deepavali times. We opened the new shop and started. We we targeted to sell 10 lakhs. So we go, we buy the materials or t-shirts from the Tirpur somewhere. So we wanted to sell with a 30% margin. So when you have a target is that 10 lakhs. 30% is we want to earn a profit of 3 lakhs. So we have 7 lakhs will be the cost. This 7 lakhs, maybe the 5 lakhs would be the purchasing cost. Or the 2 lakhs would be the other uh, the shop or other operating expenses. So our current assets would be 5 lakhs because this is the cost of the stock. And then... Uh, <clears throat> But which you are selling at a 10 lakhs. So we are buying from the vendor 5 lakhs. But we are going to sell at the 5, 10 lakhs. And assuming this is a hypothetical exam, uh, exam which is not exactly, I just want to understand the concept. So we have a working capital. We invested 5 lakhs as a working capital requirements. Because assuming the current assets as a Sunday data is a 10 lakhs, I as it's whatever I are selling as a 10 lakhs. And then our asset, what we are buying as a 5 lakhs. So we repayment to the vendor is 5 lakhs. So that component is the that we are estimating. So we need a 5 lakhs as a working capital. Can you move to the next slide, please? Yes, sir. I'll move. Very fast, I think. No, sir, no, sir. <laughs> Okay, so basically the summary of the uh, talking about all the working capital is so all companies, any organization, they require to maintain the minimum level of current assets at a point of time. This is called the quote, permanent working capital fine company. So determination of the working capital is the which is a more constant and continuously have an eye on it, which as I said, we should not overstock. And also, we should not go below the our requirement. This will hamper our business. So we have to manage in such a way that our businesses operation smoothly without any hazards. We are getting the money from the debtors on time, and we pay back to the money to the supplier and getting the goods again on the credit terms with a better price, and also pay back money to the such repayments. And then this is the effective utilization of money and optimizing our profits. Uh, for the owners or stakeholders. So to assess the working capital is required for FAM operation smoothly, FAM use the operating cycle concept and then compute each component of working capital. As I mentioned, operating cycle is a continuous process from cash to raw material, raw material to finished goods, finished goods to the Sales, sales, getting the payment from the customer, and then again reinsurance. So, in here, I just want to do one ex one example of the Dell Computer Company. So, which they, uh, which is a, they mentioned the Fortune magazine about the Dell Company. So, basically, what happened is they, you, the Dell is a manufacturer of the computers and laptops. So mostly they are focused there since they are facing with the working capital. So they started selling through the internet. So online, you can buy the, they are the one who started selling the laptop or computer desktops through online. So they're reducing their operating cost. And also they are continuously giving training to the staff to accept the changes happening in the world. So this is one of the human capital also, one of the main things which they are, apart from the working capital, human capital is also one of the important things which they focus on. Then they start giving training to the staff, update with the latest technologies. So, and then they releasing the capital and do reduction on the inventories. These are the things which was done by the Dell computers. 
so to effectively manage their working capitals. And then I'll come back to my real life experience, what we are having here. I can walk through that. Uh, when I joined in Malaysia as a part of the pre-opening hotels, that properties is the delay in opening the hotels. So we have a big challenge on getting the funds during the pre-opening time. So what we did is pre-opening time also the owners get the money from the bank to invest for the operation. So we, we, we supposed to open in July 2018, but somehow because of the delay, the portal open is delayed for nine months. Or so we were managed to open in the next year. So what happened is during that period, we hired the people. So, but we had to pay the salary as well. So the owners also not happy that they are investing money more, more, more. So what we did is during that period, a couple of other hotels were opening up. We sent our staff as a task force to help the other hotels. That way, we saving the money because we are getting the working capital of the owners. So we have proposed this plan to them. So we, we are sending our employees for one month to another property. That salary will be taken care by them. Though we will pay, they will reimburse to us. So this is a, one of the things which we did it and then similarly uh, followed by uh, during the after the opening of the hotel also we we will every month we will prepare the our working capital requirements because slowly we started with the low uh, 80 rooms we opened this is a 275 rooms but we opened with the 80 rooms the business was very low which is very difficult to pay the salary because the fixed expenses are salary, electricity, uh, and these are the two critical expenses, whether the business is operating or not. So for this amount, so we will always make a working capital and also we will make the forecast for the next three months. So we will submit what is this month, what would be our revenue, how much we will make us a profit, how much is our commitment to pay back, and then uh, how much we will get from the guests because our collection is very low because of the low sales. So, of course, we will make the forecast. Forecast is the how much we will we are expecting business in the next months, how much revenue we will generate, what would be our expenses, so what balance will come as a profit, so we will prepare for the next three months and then we will keep sending to the owners and getting the money month on month for the working capital. So this is a challenge which we have in the pre-opening time and then post-opening for one year as well. Followed by COVID 2020, we had a COVID. So totally businesses collapsed. So we have asked the people to take clear their annual use so that will reduce our operating cost and also we got the extended credit period from the our vendors also we were asked the because that is the second year of operation so we have a annual maintenance contract which is also one of the fixed expenses for the company so we have approached all the vendor to give us a discount for 30 to 40 percent on the rate so which is a direct savings uh, also we are giving the people to take a leave and then the managers and depot, we are, we, for them also we take unpaid leave. Unpaid leave means our, instead of getting 30 days salary, we will get salary for 15 to 20 days. So these are the contingency plan we should So because this also we need to provide, because second year operation also we are getting working capital from the owners for operating this property on the hotel. So we make the detailed contingency plans which are the area we are saving our costs from the payroll, from the electricity. So electricity we will shut out the one or two outlets which are the rooms are occupied. We will reduce electricity for that place. One particular tower is mean lift is shut down so we are trying to reduce the electricity we are focusing on reducing the payroll cost and then electricity and the ordering level reduced and then giving the employees to go on leave 
So these are the, we propose this and then we submit our requirement. So owners are agreed and then they give and make sure that what we expected, which is we maintain that within that limit. This was the thing. Apart from that, now that my current organization where I'm working in Maldives, here there's working capital. Uh, we will make the cash flow every month because the owners have a funding from the banks. They have a fixed commitment every month, almost one, one to two million. I mean, 10 lakhs to 20 lakhs. They, they, it depends on that month on month. They will so. so how we are managing here is we will make a forecast for this uh, for next month, for example, for the following month, we will make a forecast this month, uh, getting the revenue or sales team, how much we are we getting the revenue. And then we will work on the expenses, uh, how much, where we can save the cost. So based on the occupancy, we will work out the, the expenses in line with the occupant, occupied rooms. So we will make in due diligence, analyze the expenses. We go through the previous record, historical data, where we spend any money, anywhere excess, so we, how we can manage without affecting the guest experience. Because the guests who are staying are high paid guests, they are paying 1,500 to 2,000 dollars, US dollars. So that expectation is always high. So we without compromising the quality of services, we, if we do diligently, continuously have a meeting, discuss, brainstorming, manage the expenses and then show the result to the owners. So there are two concepts here. Is one is a budget, another is a forecast. So budget we will make for one year. That is also the budget is based, based on the owner's requirement, how much commitment they have for the bank. Whereas the forecast is on the based on month on month, we will do that. So that is will be different from the budget. But at the end of the day, everything is we are making for the repayment of loan to the bank and the, after the repayment of loan, the balance will be the profit for the stakeholders. Uh, Sabu, anything else you want me to add? Or any questions or anything? I think students may have a few questions. Yes, please. Uh, shall we go for a discussion, sir? Yes, 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 please. Thank you. Thank you, so much, sir. Well, first of all, I would like to thank you for uh, uh, such an elaborate and detailed presentation. It was very nice, sir. Thank you, thank you. So our students would love to interact with you. So they yes, have posted, sir. yes, sir. They have posted a few questions to me. Yeah. Um, uh, the first question is, uh, how do you manage with the surplus cash? Every month there will be some surplus cash, you know, sir, uh, in hand, cash in yeah. hand. Uh, how do you manage it? Surplus cash, we can. That's a good question, obviously. So what we can do is a uh, good point because I we did it in my when I was in Malaysia. There are uh, in the bank, apart from the loans, we have a short term deposits, seven days deposits plans, 14 days deposits plans. So we will invest the money for which will fetch interest there, which we really did in when I was working in Malaysia with the bank is May Bank. They have a different investment option deposits plan, which is very short term period. Seven days, they will pay 3% interest pro rate or basis. So instead of the money which is lying in our current account, of course, which will not pay any interest to you, so we will invest that and that short-term deposits because we have another life, uh, another cycle to pay back to the vendor. By the time the money will be invested in secured place in the bank, and then we will get back the money because this is a floating deposits. Mm. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. And the other? next question posted by one student, uh, while preparing the budget, what are the factors you consider? So while preparing the budget, what we usually do for the, it is a depends upon the industry industry. So I can talk about my industry being the hotel industries. How we are doing in budget is, we just finished here. I'm right now I'm working the Ozone Reserve, Goli Beach is Mali. This property is very close to airport. From 35 minutes Katamaran, we can reach our island. So this property is one of the premium property, five-star property in Maldives. So when we prepare the budget, we will see the historical record of our last three years, how we are performing. And then the major 
first uh, guest coming from which country? So we have mainly from Russia, European, now this year onwards China. So we will target which are the country guests will come to our resort. And also we will look into the, our competitors. Our competitors are under four resorts are there, four seasons, center agencies, and the two properties are there. So we will how they are performing. So our that is the fact that apart from the inventory, how many rooms we have? Our hotels is a 90 rooms we have. So we will go to the record, create historical data, and then how the new properties are coming up. So who would be the new competitor? Next year, there is a one hotel, one resort is planning to open. Next year end, our Q1 of 2025 Mandarin Group, which is one of the biggest group. They are coming, they could be one of the competitor for us. So keeping in mind all these aspects and then how the economic situations, the upcoming, the financial or economic situation across the globe. So that will be factored when we preparing the budget. So for next year budget for our our research, we are, we are not increasing revenue or occupancy percentage or revenue per occupant of high. We are making very conservative approach. The factors is this property is uh, one is the property is very old, 13 years old property, which is really required the renovation. Second one is the competitors are coming up. So and then the global sorry. No, that it... uh, so global economic conditions. We will look into the repeated guest guest and then the one unique uh Point in from our services, joy of giving is the our concept. It means if the guest is paying thousand dollar, thousand five hundred dollars, which includes your fault, they are entitled breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So we will not charge separately. This is the unique concept which has not been followed by all other resorts. This is a trump card for us. So that is why we will have the repeated customer. We will have the concept of joy of giving. And then we are very close to the Isle uh, Airport. 30, 35 minutes we can reach. And so these are the key points. And then we have a strong team, efficient uh, in, in terms of the food and food items. The chef and his team is very good team and giving the rice food. We have a regular uh, feedback coming in the TripAdvisor or Google or Trust You. These are the portal where we are getting the good big but because we are offering the services to the guests, we have a dedicated butler. Butler is the person who will be in charge for the one particular guest, so who will take care of the guest. So these are the factors which we consider for targeting the revenue, the budgeting the revenue for the next year. And of course, expenses, we will see how this year expenses, we may add slightly two to three percentage for the inflation. Then we will work out the expense, then we will arrive at the profit. Thank you so much, sir. So that was nice joy of uh, giving that yeah, concept. Joy of giving the uh, concept is all inclusive. Our price is all inclusive. So okay. we just don't need to uh, build, you know, he can order and eat anything. So we have a six outlet, he can go and have anywhere. We don't charge up because the rate, fixed rate, which includes everything. Mm. So we don't need to build separately. They don't need to ask. Just may not. They don't need to ask anything else. Or, so sometimes they may, which is not in the lid package. If they order something, that they will pay separately. Mm. Any other? So I said, yes, sir. As the director of finance in this come in this uh, hotel. So yeah. you have a lot of uh, responsibilities. So you may represent the management in all the meetings. So yes. as a finance manager, what 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 will be your you know uh, challenge challenges in, you know in achieving all those your targets? As a director of finance, so you have to keep eye on everything. So my role is not only sitting in the office doing the work in the office. I have to walk through the entire resorts. I will go through the all the resorts. I will go to the each uh, outlet. Uh, all other places to observe because being the director of finance is a custodian of the assets. Apart from the treasury management like the cash and banks, we need to make sure that all the assets are in place, nothing has been misused by any of the 
stop. So I will be in the morning, I will finish my uncle. I just walk through, go to the restaurant, to see how many guests are there. Because we will do the internal check, because we need to have internal control in place. Otherwise, there will be a possibility of fraud or misuse of cash or misuse of raw materials that may happen. So, because at the end of the day, guest comfort, guest experience, guest satisfactions are more important. On the top of it, integrity and honesty are also more important. So, I will go to the restaurant, surprise check. I will go and see how many guests are sitting there. And then I will look into the system whether the bill has been raised for these people. Let's say in the four, four tables are occupied. I will open the system. I will see that uh, there are point of sales. There they make the checks or bill. I will see whether they make the, they block the table number two, table number five. I will see table number five and six and two are occupied the best guest. So whether they punch in the system, I will physically verify the system whether it's has been punched. If they punched only two, one is missing, I will call them why it is missing. No, they just come. That is, uh, they, we will enter. So I will go do the surprise check. Uh, this is one way of controlling that. Another way is to spot check on the cash on the front office because all the outlet will not have any cash because we don't accept cash from the guests in the restaurant because which is all inclusive. So we will mm -hmm. do the spot check on the bread. And also energy consumption, look into the wherever that the light or electric, I mean, uh, because in this resort, this is a separate island. So we don't have a electricity from the government. Uh, we don't have a water from the government or municipalities. So which is we are doing by ourselves. Electricity, we are generating by ourselves using the generators. We have a four generator, 1,000 mm -hmm. on capacity one, two, and 1,250 capacity two. Four generator, two generator will be an operation, two generator will be ideal. So 24 hours, this will be functioning. So we get the diesel, we are generating electricity and giving across the island. So I will monitor how much diesel is consumed per day. So mm -hmm. how the occupancy, if the occupancy is high, 90 villas out of 90 villas, 80 villas occupied, obviously the diesel cost would be slightly higher or the temperature is high, or outside sun is humidity is high, then the temperature will be slightly higher. Water, water also, we are connecting with the sea and then we have our RO plant, we are making the drinking water by ourselves. That water is giving to the guests, or giving to the staff, we are calling the staff as a colleagues. So these are the area we need to check wherever possibility of misuse happens. We make sure that all the places, the lights are switched off, air conditioning switched off, and the villas are not occupied. In the restaurant is low occupancy period, we may shut down the villas. Apart from this is apart from that, make sure that expenses are in control, expenses are in line with our occupancy. Because the department may, may request the order, I have a team member called cost controller. His job is to ensure the raw material which is going to the kitchen, how much we are, what is the sales, how much they are consumed. Because we have a, we will do the menu engineering. Each recipe will have a ingredient, what ingredients, making of kg vegetable biryani, how many ingredients we record, how much is the cost. So each item will have the cost. Make sure that it has been aligned with that. And then we'll have the wastage report. So these are the area, key area as a DOF. I need to look into that. I will see the daily revenue report. What is the yesterday? How the expenses coming up? So, and then strong in the numbers, strong in decision making. You need to see the numbers. When you look into the profit and loss account, when the revenue is showing, when they're showing the GOP is gross operate or low, we look at the numbers where we went wrong because in the hotel industries, the we have a revenue center, different revenue center. Room is the sale of room revenue. Food and beverage is all the restaurants. Other operating department like the spa, transportations or the water sports. These are the other revenue center. Other shops also we have. So these are the revenue center and then expenses. This department, each department have a benchmark. Like room department, the profit should be above eighty five percentage always. That is a benchmark. If we go down, we need to look somewhere. Somewhere we miss the expenses were high. Food and beverages, the profitability should be above fifty to fifty five percentage. 
So they are making 10 lakhs revenue, but this 6 lakhs should be the profit. So this, uh, sorry? You carry on, sir. Okay. So we will do this as a benchmark. So my role as it is, uh, my role is to keep eye on everything. So ask questions. If, if, because we have a daily morning meeting with all the executive cosmetic vendor, meaning all the head of department with the gym. So we will read the numbers of the revenue, uh, what is the expenses going up. We will talk about that. So being the director of finances should have eye on all the areas because GM knows about the operations. Other department, they are, know about their respective departments. But finance is more important because they are the custodian, they are bookkeepers. If everything goes right, we are not recording the revenue, we are not recording the expenses, then whatever revenue generators go based until unless we properly recorded all the revenues and expenses and managing the cost well. Hmm. And we will do the historical review also. When we do the, this month, we under what we did last year, same month, what was the budget, why we went wrong. So I did the analysis of last month, p and our profit is lower than the last year. But revenue-wise, we are, one lakh is lower than the last year. But profit-wise, one lakh fifty two thousand higher, uh, lower than the last year. So hmm. I was looking at, then look at the expenses-wise, some of the maintenance work was carried out this year. This was not happened last year. And then some of the new employees are joined this year. During this month, that position were vacant. So mm. these expenses are not reflected last year. This year, we have these expenses, which pulled you down two to three percentage of your profit. Mm. So we do that. Apart from that, always one is the control, uh, custodian of the shares. Make sure that all the areas are in control. And then surgery compliance is one of the major important. Do the surprise check on the all the outlet where we are selling the liquors because there also there will be a chances of misusing that because being the hotel and this is a liquor sale is one of the major revenue. So there will be a chances of pilferage or uh, theft. So if you continuously keep eye on that, so people will not do any misuse. So my all the in the out in the resort, people know that I may go anywhere anytime. I have rights to go to the restaurant, I have rights to go to the uh out like this one, a spa or business center, anywhere. I'm entitled to go to the generator room to look into the generator for functioning. I have a rights to do because I'm more power than GM. GM will be look after the guests. Taking care of the guest operations, no. but DOF role is more than that. Taking care of the entire operator of the asset. So we need to have a three sixty approach. Yes, of course, we'll sir. You have to be more smartness. You need to have a little. You need to ask questions. Mm -hmm. The moment you start asking questions, people know that uh, these are. And also, we need to be more stronger on our domain. So. We, then people cannot play with us. So they may say, they, they can easily say that the guest requirement. But we can investigate that we will come to know this is not a guest requirement. This is they are trying to cover up that issue. Mm. So we will take logical decisions. We may come to, when we ask more questions with the team, then we can. Run. So each expenses, we have a dump roll. This is the benchmark. These expenses will not go above that. Mm. So, yeah, city is uh, six to seven percentage, but the resort hotel. If the city hotel, the electricity percentage on the revenue is 10 to 12 percentage. There's resort property, there's six to six percentage, seven percentage is a benchmark. Mm -hmm. So, so because cost driver, each guest supplies, we have a cost per occupied room. This is the cost. So, because guest supply is the, like the, what you are keeping in the bathroom, the soap, dental kit, saving kit. These are the items. And then the guest amenities is placing the chocolate or cookies in the rooms. So each will have the cost. So this cost should not go beyond that. Because basically finance is based on the numbers. The number cannot go wrong. Mm. Until unless we did something wrong. Yes, sir. Any other question? 
yes sir few of our students have questions so i'll yes, ask them to yeah i'll ask them to ask the question to you sir yeah please good morning sir morning as you were working in the service how will you forecast the demand and define a budget for it uh ah, see there are two things here one is the budget next is the forecast you may know the what is the difference between the budget and forecast so budget is usually prepared on annualized based on annual basis so next year budget we prepared already we submitted that is the one year budget we prepared we proposed this is the revenue will come expected this is the profit whereas uh, because that budget is prepared based on the assumptions these are the will be the reason so we are assuming it will happen like this so we will have a more travel so we are expecting this whereas forecast is coming on the based on the month on month so for this month we forecasters let's say in uh, we are in december now i we made the budget for this year december in last year october one year before we made a budget for this year as we are assuming this event but when it comes to this month last month we made a forecast see we made a forecast last month the last month forecast is based on the real real scenario <coughs> excuse me so the, when we come to the budget i will go by one by one because i just want to differentiate between the budget and total but it is we make them the one year before so next year budget we made now whereas the forecast is we will made on month on month one month before so that will give the clear picture that numbers will budget numbers and uh, forecast number will not be same always that will be difference either but uh, higher than forecast or lower than forecast either way it will be done so when it come to budget as i said earlier we will see the historical data we will take to the last two years 2021 2022 2023 so 2023 because we our budget exercise we started in september so when we do the september budget for the next year we will take the last two years 2021 22 actuals and 2022 up to august actual 23 up to august actual then uh, september october november december four month we take a forecast and then we arrange the number based on that as i said earlier how the market would be the next year who are our competitors what they are doing is any new properties coming up how the global economy is there uh, which we hope, from where we can expect more guests so what uh, these are the uh, factors we will consider so last year uh, when they prepared the budget last year 2022 when they made a budget for 2000 because i joined this year this year july we have more guests from china china market we did not anticipate we will get the guests from the china so our budget is totally different because the each each country people the stay is different some people drink uh, food habit is different so that will make differences so when the china guest is coming almost 5000 because border open china started traveling to maldives we didn't expect they come in just month of july that time the consumption for the food the consumption of the guest supplies consumption of guest amenities were higher than any other we did the detail analysis why this month the everything is high because chinese are very good in eating their good appetite so they will eat more so that's why the consumptions are more similarly if the people come from european countries or french their food is lower beverages should be higher so now since this year we got the chinese guess when we do the budgeting for the next year so we budgeted for the expected this money we has made travel to our resort on this this month so historical data always give up some factor which we will consider for budgeting and also how the economy is going through how the other properties are doing and then we have a getting the report uh, hotel reports the str report they will call it us so that will show give the how the business is going through in, across the globe so 
some people what happen is now now in india also many people are started traveling from india they used to come to maldives now people are from india they are traveling to indonesia they are mainly focusing on bali area for vacations so we will look into the all the factors also we have a dedicated sales and marketing team so their job is each each country they have one they have one in china one in india one in, in uh, two three people in here so their their role is they will look they will approach the travel agents uh, we have a good con connection with the travel agent across the globes so they will be are paying commission to them as well one of the is a hummingbird and other couple of other so they will also give them so these we have a chances of coming these people this country people will travel so we when we make the budget we will make month wise uh, market wise global market like uh, china russia german british usa will make how many guests will come so these are the will consider when it comes to expenses we will see the how the expenses trend we will fix the 2 to 3 percent the inflation with it of course for the diesel we are getting the reduced price next year so we will approach the vendor because this in diesel all the resorts in maldives is operated with the diesel only because they cannot get the electricity from the government so how the price would be next year will be lower four cents lower than the current so we will consider all these areas and then manning also how many employees we record to operate the resorts what is the salary? What is the market increment we need to provide? These all will be factors considered for preparing the budget. So the budget is a one-time exercise which will do yearly once, and then that will be keep it as a benchmark to proceed with it. If until unless we have a budget, it's very difficult to operation. The budget is required for even our personal life also. Like when we are getting salary of 10,000, what is the commitment I have this month? I need to pay 2,000 rent. It's a fixed amount every month. I'm getting salary or not, I need to pay 2,000 as a rental. I have electricity 500, provision I need to buy 2,000. I have the telephone, television. So we have each family will plan their budget also. Similarly, every company will make the budget. Some of the companies they are they making is achieve the profit, what they achieve this year, how much they want to achieve next year, because they might have an expansion plan, they might have a commitment to repay, repay the loan or pay back the dividend to the shareholders. These are all considered while preparing the budget. Forecast, similar exercise, but we'll do on month on month. We will do the forecast for next three months. And then based on the forecast, we will work out on the cash flow for the next three months. Obviously, cash flow will come up through the collections, how much we are getting it, our coming. Is again, it's part of the working capital only cash flow. Also. So how much pay collection will be there to run the operation? Because in our my real-time scenario, what we are doing is we will look at the bank balance every day. And then we have a fixed commitments. First fortnight, we have a payment for the we are because we are getting the guest from the airport to the island through boat. That rental is a before 15th every month we need to pay. The if we delay by one day, they will not provide service to us, which will impact the guest service. So we are very particular on clear that payment first, and then the staff also committing through the staff boat. So we will consider all this fixed expenses which we need to pay. And then we'll reforecast it. We will daily we will see look into our collections because in our industries mostly in in island wise in the city hotel they will give the credit for the guest corporate client. In the island, since we are getting the guest from across the globe, we will get the payment in our account before guests reach the resort. So our payment will be secured fourteen days before the guest arrive. Suppose the guest is coming on 30th or 29th of this month, the money will be in our account by today. So that is help us to manage our cash flow efficiently. Any other question? Please wait, sir. 
thank you sir you answered clearly yes sir we have few more questions i yes, think sir. good morning sir good morning thank you for your uh, detailed presentation sir and my question is uh, when it comes to business cycle uh, seasonal business which concept of working concept we should adopt whether it is a temporary or permanent uh, concept sir can you can you what is it can you repeat again seasonal, seasonal business which concept we should adopt whether it temporary is, or permanent sir seasonal business yes sir seasonal business is of course uh, let's i say i give an example during the deepavali time if you are opening the government that is for one or two months you just want to make sure you can have the temporary working capital for a particular period so seasonal business is not regularly you are going to do so permanent business like uh, you have a market for your business throughout the year so you need the permanent working capital to run your smooth operation of the business hello sir good morning sir yes please rj bolan uh, i have a one question sir yes please organization face the debt how to handle the situation maybe the risk factors can play in budgeting uh, while the organization face the debt organization face debt yes. uh, meaning to say they are not good in collecting the payment from the debtors right that is what you are trying to say that is a debt meaning which debts you are talking about that uh, about the loan which we cannot repay that yes, loan 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 okay loan. So, not our debts it's loan no, no, debts it's loan i'm sorry yeah so there what we can do when you are in the business if you are having struggling on repaying the loan so we need to look into that where we went wrong we have to see that suppose our collection is not on time we are not getting the money from our customer that is why we could not repay our loan then we need to focus to collect the money that is a one reason that is we have to focus at the same time we need to approach the lender whoever is a bank or financial institution for some more time to give as long as we are managed to collect our payment we can do or else if you have any assets which is no longer records whether we can dispose and get the money to settle the debt so this would be based on the individual case to case basis we need to look into that this is the overall answer i am giving is when we are facing uh facing problem in repaying our loan it means we are not getting the money from the our customer or our expenses are higher we did not foresee there some expenses so that we need to mobilize our cash flow in a such a way that whether we have unsold stock which we can sell and get more money and then repay the loan or we our our debtors we our money is stuck with the debtors we can collect that money and pay back to the loan because the one advice is some people made a mistake as to repay the loan people are getting another loan that is a mistake many people are doing that that would be the more burden for us it's very difficult to come out of that repaying one loan getting another loan is that adding our burden is it clear yes sir yes sir very much good morning sir my name is adil good morning i have a question about how to handle and face the sudden requirement of working capital for huge additional product or services that is required compared to the regular requirements okay let's see suppose you have a new order is coming up right you got a new order which you need to execute mm. right yes sir but you don't have a money to mm. pay that so maybe mm. that order it's a confirm order uh, from the uh, customer whether what we can do is if possible can get the uh, advance from the customer if at least 50% or 30% many of the organization they will get the advance 50% balance is at the time of delivery 
or 40% or 60%. So you can see how much required for pro preparing the pro processing, the manufacturing or the goods, the cost, how much you have the excess, uh, how much you have a balance in your account. You need additional fund, which you cannot get it from bank. Then one way is getting from the advance from the customer. Otherwise, <laughs> another way is they can open the letter of credit with the bank, uh, confirm order which you are getting it. So we can give the temporary credit from the bank and then overcome the situations. Or the owner can pump in money for the temporary, we can do that. There are many ways to uh, overcome these kind of situations. Is it clear? Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And uh, I would like to ask my final question. It's a, it's a general question. Yes, please. So, so as a fresh you know, uh, uh, graduate uh, from my MBA uh, uh, program, so uh -huh. what are the skills our students need to develop to make themselves fit for a finance profession? Finance profession, they should be uh, strong on the domain. Okay. They should be strong on the concept. Okay. So, and then should be strong on the numbers. Okay. Okay. So, it's strong on concept wise, like working capital or, or finance accounting concept, they should be strong. Mm. Uh, decision making skill. We need mm. more analytical skills and be mm. open to challenge. Mm. Then don't get, sometimes we may get tensed or we may get stressed or we may get panic, which we should not do that. Mm. Be calm and compassionate always because we the finance guys always you have a tendency of getting stressed out or uh, because they may feel that they may not remember the number, they may not remember. Sometimes people ask what was last year revenue, what was last month profit. So they, they may tend to, oh, I don't remember, I don't know. They, if you get panics, it's very difficult to remember the number. So we just be relaxed and tell you need to enjoy what you are doing. The more clarity on the thought and then ask more questions from the people because people may come up with so many stories to us uh, for purchasing or programming. So even that's why in our place, when we are buying anything, we always ask for three quotations from the three vendors. Even when you are buying the laptop from the vendors, we will buy it as the vendors. So we need to understand the market. We need to know what is happening in the markets because finance guy should be the gatekeeper for everywhere. So we can stop any kind of uh, fraud or any kind of uh, expenses increase more or that. So they should develop their skill on analytical skill, ask more questions, strong on that concept. Even when you go to the working capital, we are, I didn't touch upon the ratios or not. So they should be concept-wise, we need to be very strong on our concepts. Mm. It is more important and then the more analytical skills. And then analyze and ask more questions. And then why? Wow. It's, so we need to think. And then we have to, of course, we read more. Uh, we need to read our uh, newspapers. We read what is it, the economic uh, Because we finance, we need to be updated with everything. Mm, yes, sir. In terms of taxation, in terms of the statutory compliances, if you look at that, as a finance guy, MBA, they are going for the MBA finance, they are going to an organization as a finance manager or anything, they have to more shift the banking operations because bank operations, a lot of things that we need to be more uh, loan, different types of loan is available. What is the interest rate area? What is the EMI? Whether it is beneficial for us? How we are getting our way within how many months we are doing so these these concepts are that we have to be more strong. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So I think uh, you have answered almost all the questions asked by the students as well as by me. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir, you. for spending your valuable time with us today. Yeah. Thank you. I hope.